Morality in gaming is something that most developers have a hard time understanding. So what makes Detroit become human different? How are they able to make morality meaningful? Is it the characters, narrative, or is there a secret yet to be discovered? We're going to go step by step through the different ways Detroit Become Human confronted morality in a way other games have not been successful. But to fully understand morality, we first need to talk about the butterfly effect. So what is the butterfly effect? Well, in simple terms, it's a concept that shows how any small change in a complex system can change something larger. Even events that seem insignificant can have consequences we cannot see. A major complaint in gaming is that you make choices that don't affect anything. So what's the point of having choice and morality if the choices don't change the outcome in any significant way? Well in Detroit Become Human that's not the case. The game makes sure that even minor choices can have unforeseen consequences down the line. This causes us to take into consideration the ripple effect of the decisions we make. I'll talk about the individual characters and some of their choices later, but this is why Detroit Become Human is praised for its branching narrative heavily influenced by player choice. This isn't a movie where every choice is linear and we can agree or disagree with what happens. We as the players have full agency of how the story plays out. There are no traditional good or evil choices, but every decision is driven by our own moral compass and how we view individual situations. It forces us as players to see the moral responsibility with our actions. Every choice we make pushes the character towards a specific path we cannot see. The game keeps track of the choices at the different sections of the game, which then lead to how our characters interact at a later point. Sometimes you may think you're choosing the right choice to then regret the decision later. This is a direct reflection of real world ethical dilemmas and causes us to critically think of our own moral frameworks. It's a classic trolley problem experiment, except it's more in depth. So the trolley problem is a famous experiment to explore the ethics of an individual. The experiment starts with the trolley heading towards a track with five people. Would you rather let the tragedy happen knowing you didn't intervene, or would you rather switch the trolley to the track with only one person? Which is the more ethical choice? But then you must look at it from other perspectives. Let's say the one person is a person you love. Does that switch your decision? Now, how does this pertain to Detroit Become Human? Well, because of the butterfly effect, not every decision is as straightforward as the trolley example. The choices take a little longer to understand the bigger picture. But many choices involved with the characters have decisions where you potentially harm one person or a group to save another. The game makes you constantly question the value of one versus the need of many. These types of factors influence our judgment on the situation. Is it selfish to make a choice based around people we know and care for? That's the beauty of decision. There cannot be a universally agreed upon answer. Instead, it's designed to cause discussion and thought about the idea of morality. This plays out through the different characters in the game. The first protagonist, Connor, is very much a stereotypical android. In the beginning, he follows his programming without question. His only job is to be obedient to cyberlife by choosing efficient methods to complete his objective. Every move he makes is cold and calculated. These traits make him the perfect investigator to hunt down deviant androids, which are androids who no longer follow orders but have their own sense of free will. But as the game progressed, Connor interacts with androids and humans and begins to raise questions of right and wrong. Destroy this machine, and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel it's alive. But you'll leave here without having learned anything from me. Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out of here. What's more important pool. to you, Connor? Your investigation or the life of this android? As players make choices, this can lead to Connor shifting priorities from the mission to having empathy and compassion for these androids. Because all these changes are chosen by the player, it causes us to develop our own sense of morality. By deviating from what we know, are we betraying our true purpose or are we acting morally in an unjust system? Where is the line drawn between genuine empathy and making choices to further one's own life? Why didn't you shoot? I just saw that girl's eyes, and I couldn't. That's all. You're always saying you would do anything to accomplish your mission. 
That was our chance to learn something, and you let it go. Yeah, I know what I should have done. I told you I couldn't. I'm sorry, okay? We see this play out with Connor's relationship with Hank. Depending on the choices we make, we see the evolving dynamic between a human and android. Over the course of the game, the loyalties shift between being true to cyberlife and developing a bond with a human. This is why I explained the trolley experiment earlier. Connor wrestles throughout the game with the utilitarian versus individualistic actions. Utilitarianism is the idea that the most ethical choice is the one that brings good to the most amount of people. The outcome with the most benefit should be chosen. Individualism is the idea that every person should focus on their own individual priorities. Regardless of the outcome, you should make the choice that feels ethically correct. And typically, it's easier to watch from the outside as some of the choices characters make. We can reason with their decisions and understand from their perspective why it had to be done. But as a hand-on user, where our choices shape the character, it becomes our moral compass that is played out throughout the game. What do I believe in? Making choices for the greater good, or do I make choices that I feel good about myself? Am I living the life of Connor and making choices for him, or do I make choices that I would make in my own life? The high stakes dynamics adds emotional weight to the dangerous situations we are placed in leading to tough decisions throughout the game. And what makes this work so well in Detroit Become Human is the ability to see both sides of the coin. While we get to see Connor's perspective and make choices based around that, we also get to see the perspective of an already deviant android. Kara is an android who deviates early on when she sees a little girl named Alice getting abused by her father. Being able to have both sides of the situation allows us to get a deeper dive into the decisions being made. Kara's deviation and choices made after the deviation are all based upon protecting a young girl. This explores the idea of self-preservation and how far Kara will go to protect someone she cares about. The idea of self-preservation goes directly against the android programming, which leads us as players to explore our ethics. Is it justified to steal a person's clothes to protect a young child, especially if it feels necessary for survival? Is it the act itself that is morally wrong, or is it the intent behind the matter? These are questions we are forced to ask ourselves when we come across these different scenarios in the game. Sometimes, the cost of being honest and truthful could be the life of someone you care about. So is the integrity to do what's right important? As we guide Kara's decisions, we're forced to face our own biases on how we view the situations. And knowing that every decision we make has a direct impact on the rest of the game, at times I found my heart racing deciding on what choice to make to try and protect Alice. After making a mistake to trust a character early on, the next time I come across someone who wants my trust, I hesitated to not make the same mistake. My prior decisions directly impacted how I saw the new situation presented to me. If only I got the second situation without the first, I would have been more trustworthy. Over time, the things that we go through shape our perception on how we see people around us as well as how we see ourselves. We no longer find the same things important that we once did. Forgetting who you are, to become what someone needs you to be. Maybe that's what it means to be alive. That cutscene really stuck with me. The idea of willingly putting someone else's needs above your own is not something that comes easy to most people. But making choices as Kara, I felt myself wanting to put the needs of Alice ahead of Kara's willingly making choices that could be seen as unjust to protect a child. Understanding other situations allows us to build empathy and a desire to help the people. But it also shows us the downside of building strong emotional attachments. It can cause us to lose logic and make choices that can be harmful in the long run. We see this through Marcus's journey from caregiver to leader. Even before his deviation, it's obvious Marcus has care and compassion for Carl. After an altercation with Carl's son and ending up in the android junkyard, Marcus's demeanor shifts, becoming more hardened to the world around him. Before the incident, Marcus is very passive in the way he lives, obeying orders from those around him and not causing any harm. But 
but as the game progressed, Marcus's focus becomes on android freedom, which in some ways can be seen as just, but is not without its dilemmas. Who's to say awakening androids that haven't deviated is just? What about if it puts humans at risk? So the question becomes, is it right to fight for the freedom of some while putting other innocent people's lives at risk? But throughout his journey, we can choose either a peaceful approach to revolution or a violent approach. Now which is morally correct? Well to most, I'd say a peaceful protest is seen as the moral path. Choosing to negotiate, save lives, and lead with empathy and understanding is the path to choose. But to some, choosing a more violent approach with forceful actions and destruction paints a picture of a revolutionary willing to fight for freedom. It's all over the news. Now humans know. It was a mistake to reach out to them. They'll never negotiate with their slaves. We should have shown them that we're prepared to fight. Violence is never the answer. Dialogue is the only way. I'm sure the humans will listen to us. Simon paid with his life. Simon gave his life for our cause. What difference does that make? He's a hero. He died for the revolution and he won't be the last. Both are different styles of leadership. But do we have a moral obligation to minimize the violence when we are fighting for freedom? Or is the violence justified? What is the most effective approach when social movements are involved? These are questions we are forced to wrestle with over the course of Marcus's story. Our choices as the player directly affects the outcome for both androids and humans alike. Through this, the weight of a revolution is placed on our shoulders. Ultimately, the question becomes what ethics we believe in when it comes to a situation of violence versus peace. And while the in-depth characters and freedom to choose a path are important to what makes Detroit become human so unique, there's a hidden secret to how the game is created that really makes them understand morality. Let's be honest. There's other games that understand how to write characters, other games that can let players choose their path, but it's how it's presented in Detroit Become Human that makes it so unique. Understanding the character's motivations from every perspective is a crucial part to understanding morality. It allows us as a player to put ourselves in the situation and help guide our moral compass through the journey. So much of our decision making is built off the ideas of our perspective. What we see is what we know. So being able to see three different perspectives of the same situation allows us to have the full picture. But other games have tried this and failed. I look at a game like The Last of Us 2. In a similar fashion, the game had us play as not only Ellie, but as the seemingly antagonist of the game, Abby, to empathize with their flaws and actions later into the game. But this wasn't received all that well. Why? Well, we already spent 15 hours in The Last of Us 1 building up Ellie and Joel as the heroes. So now in a sequel, you want me to sympathize with someone who completely stands against everything I'm taught to believe in. Keep in mind, we don't make any of these moral decisions in the game. The story in part one is just so good and makes us feel involved. We want these things to happen because of what we have learned throughout the journey. But that's the genius behind Detroit Become Human. Most games are written with a certain code of ethics in mind. The idea of right and wrong. The decisions are already made and we are just there to guide the path. So when we see the story play out, we feel emotion, but we don't necessarily feel involved. Not in Detroit Become Human. From the start, we get three different perspectives. We're not taught which character or which choice is right or wrong. We are taught to critically think through the situations and come to our own understanding. I, as the player, had to make these tough choices. Now later down the line, I might realize I don't like the decision I made earlier on. But how can I hate one of the characters I created? This brings us a deeper emotional connection with the characters than we could get with just a straightforward told story. Not only did the writers write a story that makes the characters develop over time, but it challenges us as the players to develop along with the story. And that's what makes morality in Detroit Become Human so meaningful. A game that allows the player subjective opinions on what it means to have morals. Depending on our choices, we develop different ethics based on the unique situations we are left with. I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm sure there are a lot of different opinions on everything I talked about. If you did enjoy the content, subscribe for more videos like this and drop a like. And I'll see you guys next time.